guys welcome back to my channel and sorry I haven't been posting lately the holidays have me kind of mixed up I'm trying to film a couple of videos today so that I can have some content going so that I'm not just leaving you guys hanging I hate doing that this is a like two-part type of video it's eyes and then face because you guys know I'm long-winded and I get to talk in and then the video takes forever but that being said, I really enjoyed using the products that I used today. They surprised me. Again, I'm shopping my stash, which is really eye-opening and letting me appreciate the things that I have. Also, um, if you're new here, my video is anything and everything beauty, including hair, skin, nails, and some random things tossed in like pet care or something that I found that cleaned my shower really well. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this eye video. I will be completely barefaced except for my brows in three, two, one. Okay, so I'm back with no makeup on whatsoever. And yeah, there's gonna be a lot of new things that I have not tried before. But yeah, going along with shopping my stash and everything like that, it has led me through a journey of finding a lot of really cool products that I had not realized that I had had. And yeah, it's like going into a store and not spending anything. I'm also trying a new angle with my camera, so bear with me if my eyes are shifting back and forth because I'm used to looking directly at myself. And now I've kind of shifted it to the side to where I have to look somewhere else to stay focused on you guys. With that being said, my eyebrows are already finished. I just showed you in a previous video how I've been doing them. It seems to be working really well and it's quite easy for me at this moment. But today we're going to focus on the other new products that I've been using. Well, the other new products that are new to me that I have yet to use and I found them and I was like, oh my goodness, why haven't I used these? But I've been doing that a lot. And one of these is the Ulta Beauty Matte Eye Primer in Nude. Now this is a small little portion of it. I found it in like a little baggie that I had of like multiple things. And so I was like, well, why haven't I tried this? I was like, I'm gonna give that a go. So I'm gonna use this to prime my eyelids. It does have a color to it. If you can see, it's got a light color to it. I probably squeezed out way too much. Probably can cover both eyes with this. Oh yeah, definitely both eyes. It's like super, super thick consistency. Let's get this on. I can definitely tell you that the consistency does leave a, a tacky residue on your Islands, which is really good for holding it down and it also has a slight pigment to it It's not a heavy pigment, but you can see it has blurred out My purple veins and anything else your eyelids and your under eyes are very thin type of Skin so you're gonna want to have something that Covers that up. That's why most people use concealers and not actual um, Eye primers, but this would be a really good eye primer for that it is 0.17 fluid ounces, which is 5 mLs. Um, but yeah, this so far is really cool. Now to set down my eyes, I'm going to take my Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. This is such a great product and it's well used and well loved. I love the fact that it has an actual lid on it so that when you, if you were to turn it over, it's not going to actually spill out like many other ones do. As you can see, nothing spilling out and I really love that so you can only you won't waste any product that way which is really important and I'm going to take my favorite um, 300 real techniques setting brush and tapping it in there and just tapping this all over my lid just to, so it will still sit stick but it's not going to like take on the entire color of my eyeshadow and not actually move around. This just helps it so it blends. And you really want your eyelids to blend really well when you're putting on the eyeshadow. All right, now that we have that finished, 
quick, easy little step that you can remember. Now, I don't even remember when I purchased this or got this or whatever. This is such a beautiful palette that I came across and I was really shocked that I had never actually used it before. It is so pretty. It is the Desert Oasis 19 color shadow and highlight palette. In this beautiful, it says bask in the splendor of exotic beauty with the Desert Oasis 19 color shadow and highlighter palette. This essential mix of velvety rich pigments in buttery mattes and shimmer finishes plus five luminous highlighters let sure cre create endless looks that capture the essence of radiant sands and vivid night skies. That sounds so beautiful. And then when you open it up, it has such a beautiful like cover. It's like mirror esque, mirror -esque. and then I'm going to flip it so you guys can see this without breaking the binding. It's like a book. You don't want to break the binding of the book. But here are the colors. Do you see this? I mean, it is so incredibly beautiful. You have something like five mattes and then the rest are shimmers and highlights. And some people would steer clear of this kind of palette, but I was just thinking when I opened this, I was like, why haven't I used this yet? It is a neutral palette with warms and cools and all kinds of stuff. And then you've got your highlighters over here. BH Cosmetics makes some of the most beautiful highlighters. So naturally their shimmers and things like that are going to be top notch, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and dip into that. It has the names on them, so I'll be able to call out the names as we're using them. You know I love that, and it's, and so, I believe what I want to use today is we're gonna start off in the crease. And I wanna use Canyon, which is the lightest type of neutral brown. It's right here, it's this big palette. I like that some of the neutrals have like really huge palettes and it's got a big mirror in here so I'll be using that as well. Go ahead and tap that off. You know what, this Canyon, I bet can be used as a bronzer. We may try that out, we may not. I have another one that I wanna try out before that. So we're gonna dip our head down and go ahead and start just above this. Remember, when you're starting your eyeshadow, you can always blend out, but don't be scared to just place some stuff down. Okay, I'm gonna place it down first. You can look up, blend above your crease as well. I was feeling very nude today. Not nude as in Nikki, but nude as in nude colors. But I saw this palette and I was like, this is so beautiful. As you can see where I'm holding my brush, it's way far back. These are pigmented colors you do not have to use a lot to get a lot of payoff, if you see what I'm talking about here. I mean, I, this is just one time dipping my brush into there. I'm gonna set that brush aside and then we want like a fluffy blending brush and I'm gonna go ahead and use my big fat BH Cosmetics 24 brush and just start blending out over the top. That way when you blend out the top here, you're not losing the definition that you already had in your crease. You're just smoking out the top and blending it so that you don't have that stark contrast unless you're doing like a cut crease and then that's a different story. You want that stark con contrast. As you can see, like I still have the color right here, but it has blended out up upward without having to add any more product. You don't want to have to keep adding product to your eyes. You, when you are doing something like this, you don't have to just continuously add product. You can see it has blended out. It has blended out quite well without having to add anything else. BH Cosmetics is a very pigmented and is a very pigmented company. So don't think the price point is going to be like mm, they're not going to pay off. No, they pay off. Trust that. They are really good, and I absolutely love their brushes. Okay, now that that is nicely blended out, you can see we have that nice gradient 
You can see how we have that nice gradient look right here. It's darker here than it blends upwards. That's exactly what you want to go for when you're creating like a any type of look unless it's a cut crease you, or a halo eye or whatever. You don't want to always have just like bam colors slapped onto your face. Now I'm going to take Nightscape, which is this kind of dark cool brown on my Luxie 215 small angle brush. And I'm gonna take it along the edge of my eye and uh, start like a wing without using eyeliner yet. Now for this, I'm going to look straight into the mirror because remember of my hooded eyes. So I'm going to actually look straight into my mirror and then start adding my angle. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my Real Techniques Defining Crease Brush once again with no added product and just start blending out that angle on the side. For all my hooded eye friends out there, sometimes powder is like your best friend, no lie, when it comes to when it comes to this type of thing with wing or smoking out wings or anything like that. You know, powder can be manipulated a lot easier. Tapping into that and just kind of brushing it out with the same angled brush. And add a little bit more. If you have a hard time deciding what the angle of your actual wing should be the most flattering type of angle, is you want to line up, your, you know how you line up your brows, this edge of your brows? Well, that's pretty much how you're going to determine what the most flattering wing is. Now that doesn't mean that you can't like fox eye it and things like that. Just, this is just for your very typical wing. I alter my wing all the time. So, that, but that's just a little hint to kind of give you an idea or whatnot. All right, as you can see, I have a nice little smear there going on. My poor brushes are stained from like just using them. I'm gonna take my Luxie 231 Small Tapered Blending Brush and I'm just going to tap it into that Nightscape color, just, just the tip of this, and just start blending it a little bit more. Just blending it out. If you watch my positioning of my hands, that's where you want them to be when you're working on blending things. If they're way up here, you're gonna, you can get a lot of stuff going on. Like if I were to do that, but it adds so much pressure to your eye. And if you work on clients, that's not gonna be very comfortable. So essentially having a pigmented products and just building on them, lightly adding a little bit here and there is, is gonna be your best bet. Instead of torturing your client or yourself for that matter. That's where I want it to go. You can see the nice gradient it's creating. I'm gonna take that big old BH Cosmetics brush and just blend, continue blending. This one I kind of hold middle, upper, because I'm literally just blending it. And because you don't wanna have any harsh lines. Kind of blending everything in. Just keep blending out until you feel like you have it to where you want it. Trust me, this is a process. This is not like, hey, bam, bam, and we're done. This is not one of those. You just wanna keep blending until you feel comfortable with it or it's where you're at or where you wanna be at, per se. Okay? We're not dragging it out too much. We're not pulling it this direction or that direction and weighing it out really, really huge, we're really just creating a soft, smoky appearance. I have my lights set up differently today, so I have everything set up differently today, so we'll see if you guys like that or if it works out or whatever. But yeah, this and with hooded eyes, you know you want to take the color up a little bit higher just so you, it's seen. So we get that nice gradient look. Again, same brush, nothing on it. Just blend, 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 blend. Windshield wiper works 
those circles work. Whatever really works for you. Now, with this palette, I have gone back and forth where if I want to do an all matte type look or if I want to do like shimmer and all of that. So I think I want to delve into one of these shimmers because they are so intensely beautiful here. Let me swatch a few. This is terrain that I'm swatching first. And then I'm going to swatch moonscape right next to it. And then I'm going to swatch mineral right next to that. And then I'm going to go ahead with hot spring, which is a gorgeous blue. And then, oof, my fingers, I ran out of fingers. I already did mineral. I already did mineral. And then we're going to take like the darker colors, like prickly pear. And it's just, I mean, these are so pretty. So if you can look at them. This is terrain and then moonscape and mineral and then hot spring and prickly pear. And that's just a few of the shimmers that are in there and they have some serious payoff. Now you can see why I'm a little com little conflicted with what I want to do on my lids. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab Terrain, which is right here. Be and uh, sorry, it took me a minute to look because this is flipped upside down. But I'm going to take Terrain, which was the first one I swatched. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it right on my mobile lid. And I'm going to use my Morphe brush that I use constantly but have no name for it. So I'm so sorry. But we're going to go ahead and I'm going to apply this dry first just to see how it applies. And if I really actually need to wet it. I mean, look at that. That is so gorgeous. I'm not even, it's not even wet. Like the color. So beautiful. And I'm taking this up <clears throat> only ever so slightly above my mobile lid just to add a little something there so beautiful i mean it just really is such a beautiful shade it worked out so good i'm going to take my little packing brush my luxie um small tapered blending and just dip right back into that nightscape shade just so I can tap right over, just so lightly over this so that the edges meet and blend. Next I'm gonna take this super teeny tiny, it looks like a lip pencil kind of thing, and I'm gonna take that and I'm going to dip it into sand, which is a matte shade right here. It is like a matte bone color because I have shimmers on my eyes and I may or may not, I probably will put it into my inner corner of the eye. I want to make sure that I have a more balanced matte look. Hence why I'm adding the bone color to my brow. I have started realizing that like little lip pencils like this seem to apply it right exactly where I want it instead of like scattering it all over the place. Like, even if I just took it right here and wanted to run it underneath there, see how tight I can get right up against that? The things you learn just by playing around with your makeup and your makeup brow brushes. So. And then I take a clean, a clean kind of brush. It's small, it's a shading brush, clean, real technique shading brush. I'm just going to just barely touch this and make it blend just as many boost so there's no harsh lines. There's a time and a place for sharp lines and right now it's just not what I'm looking for. As you can see that brings up my eyes and that's really important when you have fitted eyes. Next I'm going to add the smallest teeniest little wing and I'm going to be using my KVD Tattoo Liner in Trooper Black. This is one of my all-time favorite liners. And I'm just going to tag the edge of my lashes just right out here. I'm going from where my 
la the, the two, the upper lid and the bottom lid join. And I'm just kind of going out and then I'm bringing it back in. I'm not even bringing it to my actual like crease or anything like that. I'm actually just bringing it directly just straight out and then straight back in. Do you see what I mean? Just a very, very small little wing. That's all. Nothing big. Now after that's finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some micellar water on my Q-tip and just clean up the edge following that line, following that little wingy wing, okay? And anything that's fallen to your face, which actually this did not have much fallout at all. And I am thoroughly loving this palette. And I have come across so many things where I'm like, why haven't I even been using this? And that's definitely where I'm at questioning myself with this. It's like, how long have I had this and why haven't I used it? Because it's absolutely gorgeous. Go ahead and finish up the rest of my face in a different video. And then I'm going to come back and finish up my eyes. So when you see me next, I'll have a finished face. Okay, so I'm back. I have finished my face and I'm gonna go ahead and finish my eyes and my lips in this video. So we're going back to our Desert Oasis. I did use this gorgeous Mirage. I mean, ooh, hello. Gorgeous, right? And it is so, oh my goodness. And it's just on my cheeks. I diffused it out just a smidgy poo so I wasn't so bam blinding highlight and we're gonna go ahead and just continue on with this fun little look I'm going to take this brush that I used to put the sand underneath my brow bone and I'm going to tap it right into my inner corner look at that pigment mm. love it love it love it love it Going back to that angled brush that I used is my uh, Luxie, 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 Luxie angled 215 brush. This is, is what I did the outer corner with. And I'm going to go ahead and tap into the Nightscape, which is the darkest tone that I used on my eyes, which is right there. And I'm going to go ahead and just tight line just the outside corner of my lashes. Just stamp it in, okay? Just right on the outside. We're keeping a lot of the color on the outside or even the work on the outside corner. This palette is stunning. I feel like I have been missing out all this time. Again, just bring it in as far as you want. Now I'm going to take my Morphe 431 brush and I'm going to dip into this Canyon color, which is the original color that I used for my crease. And that way I can just kind of blend the two together. It will help with the blending out process as well. This is a little packing brush, but you don't have to do this. This is just a little extra step just to diffuse the outside corner a little bit. Do you see how it brings everything together? Now, when you leave nothing on your bottom eyelashes or eye, your bottom underneath your eyes, it does create a lifting effect. So just by half doing it, it does still create that lifting effect, but still joins in the whole eye look together to your bottom lash. Now, because I've gone ahead and done my whole face, naturally, when you do your brows first, there's gonna be some type of powder that gets into your brows. That's why I, even though I have set my brows down with the NYX glue, I'm going to go ahead and just lightly coat some of the hairs with the Busy Gal Brow in black brown. Super teeny, super teeny tiny little um, wand, which I love. I've actually thought about getting like the darker or the darkest shade and just use it for my bottom lashes because I just love it. As you can see, that just brings the brow back to life. 
So don't think like, oh gosh, I can't do anything now because I have my brows already set down. No, no, no. I'm not really like doing too much. I'm just adding just a, just a smidgy boo. The kind of... Per usual, we are curling our lashes. Yeah, that's, those are mine right there. Now I'm going to take this Buxom Mascara and this is the blackest black. This is the, not my language, Intensely Volumizing Mascara by Buxom. Again, shopping my stash. I was like, I have this? Wait a minute. Hmm, I need to try this. And boop, that is a big old wand. Hello wand, that's huge. And we're gonna go ahead and just start using this on our lashes. Oh on the top. Remember the back combing of our lashes because stuff falls on our lashes when we're putting on eyeshadow. And then you end up with just like a weird look. Have you ever seen someone who doesn't back comb? Now if you're guilty of it, it's all good. We've all done it. I started doing this back combing when I was in like high school because I started realizing that I had um, like eyeshadow on the top of my lashes and it just stopped my lashes from looking as black as they could. I mean that's what we're doing. We're trying to make them look black and stand out so I really like how this separates. I like the wand on this. I mean it's super nice. It's super black. And this brush is freaking amazing. And it, even though it is like a synthetic brush, I'm not like poking myself in the eye all over the place, which I really love. So yes to this, as long as it does not <laughs> bother my contacts, which I'm really hoping it doesn't because I really, really like it. It has done such a beautiful, beautiful full effect on my eyes. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my face and my lips in a different video, and then I'll be right back with my final look. Okay, so I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video. I know it took a little bit longer, but I would like to give the little steps and things like that. That's why my videos are usually a lot longer than what they should be, is um, I like to give all the little steps in between and how I feel about a product and stuff like that so that you guys can judge for yourself whether you wanna do this eye look or you want to use that product or whatever. I had a super fun blast making this, this video. Again, it's gonna be a two-parter. And uh, I hope you guys' holidays are going fantastic. I'm going to try to post content so that you guys can have the content coming at you even when like the holidays hit. Um, but otherwise, bear with me because holidays are always super busy and it's not that I don't appreciate you guys, because I do appreciate every single one of you, and I, guys, I thank you guys so very much for watching every single one of my videos. At the end of my video, you know I'd like to give you that little reminder that beauty is only skin deep. Physical beauty, that is. So, makeup can cover anything that's on your skin. Hyperpigmentation, um, you know, any type of like a birthmark on your face or anything really that you might want to cover up, which I think is absolutely beautiful no matter what you, you, like, you don't got to cover up anything. You're perfect just the way you are. But if you want to cover up things, makeup's going to cover up pretty much anything. You have things that can cover up tattoos now. And you know, that's the thing. Makeup can cover up a whole lot of things that are external, but if you're not beautiful on the inside, you're not working on your inside self, your heart, the way you treat people, things like that, chances are all that ugliness that's inside, it's gonna show on the outside. And it's gonna take away that beauty that you have on the outside. So stay awesome, stay beautiful on the inside, take care of yourselves. Don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching.